birdies and brews. Adore this place. Something for everyone, even non-golfers. That guy up there is Chris Hutchison, the founder of this fine establishment. Feature length interview with him. Show you a couple of questions from that before we move on to the virtual zoo golf. And there'll be a giveaway at the end as well, as usual. But stick around for some donkeys, some camels, some snake action, some bomb action, of course, some glory, perhaps, some close to the pin on Pebble Beach, and some crazy bounces at St. Andrews. Me. Hey. See? Alrighty. Chris, thanks for joining us, bro. Perhaps very it is gold. Ad hoc interview. That's all right. Uh, so, we'll keep this brief, I know you're a busy man. No, that absolutely goes good, got all the time of the day. So. Um, what inspired you to uh, begin Birdies and Bruce? Uh, Birdies and Bruce, so really simple. Um, I've been in the golf industry for 10 years now. Wow. Um, and I always had this concept that, especially like being based in Wellington now, um, golf is one of these sports that's really difficult to play all year round. But one of the other things as well is like trying to get people into golf that aren't normally golfers. Um, so one of my big things is always to give back to the game. Yeah. Um, so for me, I always wanted to create an environment that people wouldn't feel scared of walking into or feel like, oh, I'm here with a golfer to play golf, but I don't play golf, so what fun am I going to have out of it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we created like a different environment. So we have carnival games, so people that have never picked up a golf club can still have some fun. But the whole aspect of mixing hospitality and golf in a central location was like, the key idea of like what we originally wanted yeah. Um, but yeah for us like seriously it was just all about how can I give back to golf and give golfers and non-golfers an experience to enjoy the game that we all love so and you're kind of one of a kind definitely in golf and make a really hopefully a good Niche business model product. yeah awesome and finally Chris uh, I heard obviously you're a bit of a golf yourself yep what's your favourite uh, virtual golf course here I uh, see Favorite virtual golf course for me personally has to be St Andrews. Right. Um, legitimately, from like 15, 15 minutes down the road from St Andrews, oh, growing wow. up. Yeah. Um, so for me, Got yeah, roots there. yeah, yeah, um, St Andrews is great. And look, we all like to try and hit the 18th green on the final shot, and we like to cut over the hotel. So yeah. um, we have a few egotistical moments between us and a few of the staff, mm -hmm. and um, like to go for it. But um, yeah, yeah. that would be be a, be a favorite course, um, and then. Favourite closest to the pin would probably be seventh hole at Pebble, little drop hole. Yeah. Um, I saw you guys had this had that up the other day. Right? Yeah. I um, said Adam, who's been in here, he's yeah. had two hole in ones. Dan Hillier was in here the other night. Uh, um, yeah. New Zealand number one golf, fantastic yeah. guy. Um, he had a hole season. in one. Yeah, he had a hole in one as well, and yeah, so that's nice. absolutely good. I'll be even spiders. Fancy nine <laughs> holes at St Andrews, then, Gussie. Yeah. Nice, Sweet. awesome, Chris. Yeah, Thanks awesome, really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, any time. So, yeah, awesome. we'll do it again. Yeah, love to. Good man. Thank you. Off we go then. Virtual zoo golf at none other than St Andrews. Formal introduction of my boy Gus Exotic here. Very capable golfer. Uh, subscribe to the channel and like the video if you want to find out how he gets that nickname. It's something to do with the Tiger King. I'll just leave it at that for now. So pretty mediocre start here, uh, but you know, two greens, two fairways, you know, one for the stats. Obviously no Arcos strokes gained analytics today, but um, plenty more videos on that coming up. Now, putting is hard on the old GC Hawks. Let me tell you, it's incredibly sensitive and tricky to get the hang of for a first time user here took us a few holes to get used to it believe me so to avoid the early snake on the first and I just I didn't feel like I pulled that one but there you go we're off the mark snake to John Gussie starting to open up and go after these a little more now we were told that a high ball flight is often punished by the GC Hawks you need that kind of lower piercing flight for it to really pick it up and get it out there but uh oh what have we here the dreaded double cross that's a very early unexpected donkey gonna have to have a get face count have a look at this one yeah as we feared that's a calf strike closed as f so uh two animals down for myself
that's more like it. Managed to find the fairway in that one and get a nice little hop forward off the old St. Andrew's Lynx topography. Gus just, again, a higher ball flight just popped up on him, seemed to pull up a little short there. And that's a, that was a good pin high shot, if I say so myself. Trying to get one back. Gussie pitching on then. Now, can we capitalize on two putt? Bit of a double breaker here, which certainly isn't foreign to St. Andrews. And yep, yeah, he's managed to find a bit of pace and roll it up for a gimme. Gussie for his par. It's a noble effort, but not quite. Now then, starting to find the rhythm. That's a four-star bomb with a, another nice hop forward to creep over the 300-yard mark there. Gussie again. I don't know if it's a little high in the face or it's not quite getting it out there to his usual long standard. First par five, and he appears to have tugged this one a little. Better keep an eye on this. The camels are creeping. Yep. There we are. Nice to, nice for Gus to pick up an animal himself. Trying to get on for two here with a three wood, but this one is blocked. Get on the tee. Oh, no. That's, that's near enough green high. Gussie out of the bunker then. Has to be aggressive to get a look for bird. Not bad, just misses the green though. And a little pitch on, surely. Oh, it seemed to thin it a little and it came up short. I mean, that is poor from there. So just in frustration, chips on with the same club, the 60. But he holds it. What a man. Yeah, Bobby Dazzler. Down for four for the birdie and Gus chips on and just in the jaws there makes the six to a longish par three, the eighth and pretty happy with that five iron. Pin high golf, a sign of good ball striking. Gussie going with a Grip down rescue, I believe. Another fine shot. Exactly pin high as well, near enough. Now, outrageous looking break on this one. There's left to right, and he's almost within gimme range. For back to back birds, and he's just slipped out. Gussie to avoid the snake then after a good initial approach shot. Oh, hate to see it. Takes the snake off me. Going for it a little again. On the short par four, ninth. Didn't quite catch it, a little high on the face. What's the big dog got? that one that's the lower ball flight five star bomb bomb of the day needless to say we um, both pitched it on and uh, both three stabbed four fives <laughs> fast forward to 17 trying to cut the corner this one is cutting far too much and Gussie had a go on a very conservative line. So obviously the second one's going to be anything but a slice. So there we are, running out of steam I think at this point. 
but he gets a member's bounce out of nowhere. I'd, I'd happily be a member of St Andrews. And we both had another quick flirt with a long drive, but both of us well out of steam at this point, and 299 was the most we could manage. So thought we'd finish up with close to the pin, the famous seventh hole at Pebble Beach. 5.1, it's Gus's best effort. And then this one never left it in my best effort, but just a bit too much sauce, spins back to 5.4. And that concludes the virtual zoo golf at Birdies and Brews. As I said earlier, this full feature length interview with Chris Hutchison, the founder of Birdies and Brews, can be made available in a separate video. For those of you interested, leave a comment down below. We, we cover a lot of insightful and interesting uh, golf subjects, um, particularly those of you based in New Zealand might find that one interesting. Maybe a more of a podcast vibe, you can sort of listen whilst you're at work or something. So let me know in the comments if you want that as a separate video. More giveaways then. We have some level pegs, premium hardwood golf tees, really, really top drawer. A box of those will last you four months if you play once a week, no exaggeration. And the balls, they're just quality premium balls. Look at that, that was a double breaker. Uh, so to enter the giveaway, like, subscribe, hit the bell as well, and show me some love on the gram. You gotta follow me on Instagram as well, real simple. And. Uh, that's it this time, golf fans. See you on the next one.